What's up, everybody? Chad here. Ryan here. And we're back at it again for another installment of Wednesday Warriors, the show where Ryan and I, we go to our local comic book <laughs> shop, we pick up the books that appeal to us, and we share our thoughts and feelings with you. Now, for fans of the show, you'll recognize a little different setup. Um, Ryan and I were unable to actually you know, meet up physically, so we're doing it over Zoom. Um, this might actually be a little bit of a move if this works out, because this is, this is kind of easier for both of us. Yeah, so when when I come home, um, it's a little difficult considering, you know, I get back late and Chad is work in the morning. So uh, it can be difficult to kind of fit in Wednesday Warriors along with other things we want to talk about. Um, so, you know, maybe we could just we're just trying this out to see if we can do Wednesday Warriors at a later date uh, with our books. It gives us more time to read as well. Um, and yeah, it's a different format, but hopefully um, you know, we've all gotten really accustomed to doing things virtually, so hopefully we can uh, we can make it work, and I, I think I think it will work. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Exactly. And we did miss last week's Wednesday Warriors. We have a Venom review. Let there be carnage be up. Um, but um, this is another another double decker. So this is actually the second double double decker of Wednesday Warriors in a row. So it's going to be a long one. Um, yes. So strap in. So today we have. Primordial number two, Hellboy, The Bones of Giants number one, The Silver Coin number six, Newburn number one, Moths number five, The Good Asian number six. A lot of indie <laughs> books in the last two weeks, guys. Um, then we got Moon Knight number four, Daredevil number 35, The Amazing Spider Man number 77. Batman Reptilian, number five. Batman Detective Comics, number 1044. Uh, we both have Task Force Z, number one. The Swamp Thing, number nine. The Order of Arkham City, the Order of the World, number two. Batman the Long Halloween Special. And Dark Knights of Steel, number one. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, a big one. We're gonna, again, with these double deckers, we can't really talk about it for too long. We could be here for five hours talking about these two weeks of books. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna jump into it and uh, I will give Chad the floor to talk about his the indie books, which I'm super excited to hear about. I've been lacking indie in my life um, and I'm gonna live vicariously through Chad. Yeah, so um, with indie books, I have a couple of titles I've been keeping up on, as well as a couple of titles that are brand new and some that kind of just started. So if you guys are wanting to get in, into indie books, I can give you some recommendations right here. So up first, I wanted to talk about Primordial Number 2 by Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. Now, yeah, go ahead, because I'm, I'm this one is the one I'm most interested to hear about, because the first one you really enjoyed, except for one specific moment. Yes. And I wanted to see how the second issue kind of carried on with what you enjoyed or kind of reveled in the bad moment. It very much reveled in the bad moment. It uh, <laughs> The first book was this wonderful, like mystery kind of CIA spy thriller thing going on. And um, this second one, I it, it, it was kind of cool. It dealt with like different dimensions and different playing with time, it seemed. Um, mm. But this was very much my reaction after reading it. Just what? My, my initial reaction was, um, I can't believe, I looked at how much this costs, which is uh, $3.99. And I was like, I can't believe I spent $4 on this. Um, I was actually very disappointed. I, uh, it didn't capture my attention. Um, some of it actually has stuck with me though, because it gave me such a bad reaction. I kept <laughs> thinking like, why, like, why did it have to go this way? Um, that's interesting that usually the first, the best first issues establish tone and they establish plot. And it, from what I hear, it established neither in, the, in that regard. It threw you on a complete loop uh, at the end, because I did read the first issue, throws you on a complete loop at the end of the issue, and then the, the series is different. Um, and, and this kind of comes down to what we say about Jeff Lemire all the time. Um, it's inconsistency. Sometimes he's phenomenal. Um, I'm really looking forward to his Robin and Batman book coming out pretty soon. Um, but it makes me worried because 
you know, with some writers like Chip Zdarsky, for instance, uh, you know, you pick up that book, it's going to be good. Um, whereas Jeff Lemire, you could pick it up and it could be really, really good. Or in this case, really, it just misses the mark. Yeah. And I mean, I, the art is great and it's Andreas Fomacino. He knows what he's doing. He's got these wonderful page layouts, these wonderful panel designs. I mean, look at this, like the entire page is made up of dozens of different panels. Wow. And it's, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of, of, of art, but it's reading it. I was just, I was like, it was trying to be like this mind fucky kind of thing, but yeah. it, like, it wasn't there and I wasn't invested in it. And I was like, I don't know. It's it's a talking dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's I don't know. So, but, uh, do you know how long the series is? I have no idea. I I don't think I'm gonna keep up with it. It's a, it's a it's a it's a no from you, dog. It was just I don't give a crap about space monkeys and space dogs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and and usually it's either you read stories you like. Trust me, the, I've read all of the new 52 Red Hood and the Outlaws. You either read stories you give a crap about and the quality, it doesn't really matter, or you read stories you don't give a crap about, but the quality is so good, you have to. So like, if it's it's lacking in both, it's just, it's a drop. But here's an interesting question. Do you think it has any value or it can save itself within later issues? Or do you think it's just, nope, two issues in, it's, it's already dead? I, I think it can save itself. Um, it's Jeff Lemire. Like he could, and Andrea Sorrentino, you know, they're powerhouses. They could yeah. turn it around into something really great. I just don't have the patience. I mean, um, I'm just, it, after that, like, I just can't, um, I just don't want to risk it because it, you know, this is my time and my money at stake here. And uh Absolutely. Like, if you guys are going to keep up with Primordial, let me know in the comments section, because I do want to see how it goes. Uh, but, but And, like, I'm sure there is appeal here. There, the, Like, I'm sure people do want, like, want to know what the mystery is with the dog. But, I mean, right now, like, the mis- like it's basically the, 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 you know, the dog went to space and got sent to another dimension, maybe in a time loop or something. I don't care. Like, I yeah. just, and it's stuck there. I don't really... I just, I just, I don't care. Like to me, after issue two, there's no stakes. Um, I, I don't feel invested at all. Um, it's just, you know, I give it like a five out of ten. Honestly, like very disappointing. Um, did not really enjoy it almost at all. But are there people who would enjoy it in the sense of if they're interested in that kind of genre? Do you think it's like decent enough in that genre to continue? Um, I, it's, 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 um, it's a little bit too contrived. There's nothing too dense going on here. And it's like, it wants to be this crazy story, but it's really not. Um, I don't know why it's called primordial. There's a monkey at some point. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, I don't know. It's, it, the stakes right now are, aren't here. Um, yeah. If the third issue finally those stakes develop, then you know the first issue had stakes, and then it realized, oh, like this, these stakes don't matter. And uh, this, you know, but yeah, five out of ten. All right, now we move on. We move on. What's next? What do you, what you what are you yearning to speak about? Oh, this one, New Burn, number one by Chip Zdarsky and Jacob Phillips. Please enlighten me, please. This is wicked, wicked good. This <laughs> is uh, it, it's written by Chip Zdarsky. Um, I'll take it, something by Chip Zdarsky is good. It's a number one, so I highly recommend you all jump on it. Um, like some other indie stories that I am digging, it's a detective story. Um, it's about um, basically this private detective and mm-hmm. he he works for some crazy people uh ryan you're really gonna like it because you like the sopranos that's all i'll say um, oh my the, lord the, the guy looks a lot like Polly walnuts from the sopranos <laughs> uh, oh. he's got he's got the uh he's got the wingtips you know um so the whole time i was reading it i was i was actually reading he, he's more of like a powerhouse Polly's more of a you know yeah, yeah. A fuck, but I was reading <laughs> the way Tony Soprano would talk, like you know, very um alpha. 
Um, it was really, really, really good. It was a, uh, it's a detective story and the detective work is there and you see the process, like nothing is left out on the table and nothing is like, oh, I'm a really good detective because I'm a really good detective. Like, uh, like in, in Batman v Superman, yeah. like, oh, find my mother and okay, oh, I will find her. I'll find her. Finds her. Martha will show. die tonight. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, I already found her. And then um, <laughs> there was a backup issue in the, um, the back by uh, Nadia Shamas um, with mm-hmm. um, Zayed Youssef Ayoub. Um, and I don't know, it was not a lot of dialogue. It was about just like um, a robbery gone wrong almost. Interesting. And um like I don't know, it, it was kind. Of, it has nothing to do with the main story, I don't think. Um, it's kind of just some other stuff they threw in here to throw like another writer to that chip probably liked working with a bone. Um, does it um, like does it detract from the? No, because I mean Newburn is was fantastic, and then the little backup is kind of it's 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 I don't know, I kind of it's just a little quick crime piece, mm-hmm. almost no attachment to the main story, so. You can skip it if you want, but uh, it's there if you want to read it. But um, yeah, this was the dialogue was fantastic. Everything, the story structure just made total sense. I was a really big fan of this book. This is like a 10 out of 10. Really? Um, a 10? Yeah, a 10. A rare 10. This is this is going to be a wicked, wicked series. The art is, um, I wouldn't really say it's anything particularly incredible. It is very grounded um i mean um jacob oh, Phillips wow, yeah. captures these moments it, it almost literally it looks like a tv show because it, it doesn't have these outlandish kind of styles to it it's just more or less um straightforward and uh for this kind of grounded story i do appreciate that um but so 10 out of 10 definitely hop on newborn guys i really solidly recommend it uh great detective story um, and on the on the flip side, this is a, another grounded detective story, um, but with a lot of style on the pages. Yeah. Um, wow. So whereas with Newburn, you have, you know, these just grounded moments here that just look like almost something from a crime TV show. Um, the Good Asian is very bombastic, very colorful. Um, another wonderful detective story and this is probably the best issue yet um yeah i'm waiting i'm waiting to ask after the good asian so because i want to i want to hear your thoughts comparing the two so go ahead however this is starting to get a little bit much okay because six issues in here um were introduced like we were introduced to so many new characters throughout this series um it is hard to keep track of them all because I mean, there, there are so many and um, honestly, thankfully we get this little page here in the beginning, um, which has, you know, the main characters where they are. Um, but at, at one point he mentions this character, Lucy, and I had kind of forgotten who Lucy was. And I flipped back to see, to read about it. And she wasn't listed here. And I was like, I can't really remember what her role in the story was. <laughs> um, it's getting it's overwhelming. Just, it's just getting a little thick, uh, but the story is really, really good. Um, I, I still really am enjoying it. Um, poor Ed, Eddie Hark, he can't, his shoulder has gotten <laughs> messed up in every issue. Um, but honestly, um, so Pornsack Picture Show really knows what he's doing with the detective story. He also shows the detective work really well. Um, that's more of a visual, whereas with Newburn is more of like, Newburn, the guy's name is Newburn. Mm-hmm. He finds out clues through interviews, and um, okay. Edison Hark, he gets his clues through like visually seeing them. Um, just two different d- detective skills that work there, and it's really cool to see those. And uh, Tefengi's artwork really highlights the um, the finding of those clues. Like, there's just this fight is so so well laid out just the first couple of pages there's a wonderful fight and um it is really really well laid out well um blocked i want to say it's Mm -hmm. that was a highlight for sure of the issue so how does this good asian issue compare to others is it like one 
this, one of the best. This is it, one of the best, if not the best. Um, wow. It's the the only detraction is it's just I like like if I'm if you if you guys want to read the good Asian uh, at this point we're six issues deep. If you can find all the backup issues, go for it. But this is something that's definitely going to be a lot smoother to read in a collected edition. Yeah. Um, when you're dealing with so many characters and so many different plot threads, keeping them all in straight in little dude's head over here uh, is difficult um because you can that you kind of forget about them especially when you're only reading them once a month so you're thinking maybe wait for the trade at this point um oh yeah i mean six six issues in d- definitely with the trade um if you guys were enjoying this series but kind of lost it i would still say pick up the trade because this this is a really enjoyable but the trade is going to really help it because um, Fidget Show, he's used to writing novels, you know, like, yeah, um, that's that's where he got his art. Um, so with a novel, it's all out there all at once, unless it's in a series, but still with each story is self-contained. Um, and the, the you know, this is just monthly installments of that it's serialized it's part of the keep it, keep it straight. Um, so I give it a nine out of 10. Um, honestly, the the action with some of the best of human in comics, usually action in comic books is very, eh, it's yeah. skippable, it's, it's not what, you, like, I'm not there for the action in most comics I read, the action, there always has to be action, um, but it's like, yeah. it's like uh, in, in, a, in an episode of the TV show Daredevil, there's, a <laughs> there's exactly, like, almost, there's at least one fight per episode, and you can get through a whole episode of very little action, and then there's a wicked fight at the at the end of it. Um, they do that quite often. Um, so, so with Newburn, it's obviously totally different, like stories at totally different spots. But is Newburn looking to be a more promising detective story, or is it just a better book? And maybe The Good Asian is a better detective story. So, what what are your thoughts on the comparison? Because you know they are of the same genre. Well, I mean, they're they're both kind of two different kinds of detective stories. This is very pulpy. Okay. This is very um, modern crime thriller. Um, so like, this is a better book. <clears throat> Uh, but I'm not saying it's a better t- detective book. Um, okay. It's just overall, it's a little cleaner, <clears throat> a little tighter. Mm-hmm. But The Good Agents is still absolutely phenomenal. It's just not quite, like, Picture Show, he's just not as used to the comic book formula as Zdarsky is. All right, sweet. So two great books <clears throat> to keep on your radar, um, especially detective books. Um Ironically, the most popular comic book character is a detective, yet we rarely get actual detective stories. Um, so if you're really like into that kind of crime thriller or pulp pulp action crime uh, detective story, there's two books for you right there. Um, I know Chad has been raving about The Good Asian for around six months now, so I'm definitely going to pick up the trade when it comes out. And Newburn, that should be on. Anytime Chip Zdorsky releases anything, everyone should be picking it up yeah, because right, you yeah. know you're gonna love this i know you're gonna love this i'm so excited um and i'm I, after this i'm gonna go on pull box and i'm going to subscribe to the series right after um we are done with wednesday <laughs> warriors so what do you have up next mods hellboy hellboy all right i'm i'm interested because just a little preface um i'm, I'm sure chad could say this just as well as i could but we're you know we're relatively young in terms of like comic books are are concerned like we've been reading them for a while but hellboy uh spawn those 90s things that's a little before our time so we kind of have this like passive enthusiasm where it's like a new spawn thing comes out we're like i feel nostalgia for this even though i wasn't around and it's like hellboy is kind of the same thing and i know chad specifically has been wanting to get into Hellboy for uh, quite a while now. So how's your first foray into the character? This was decent. Mm-hmm. It's it's based on a novel um, by Mike Mignola, who created Hellboy, who did the art and the stories for most he's of done Hellboy's everything. history. He's, he's the Todd father of Hellboy. <laughs> he's the Eminem of Hellboy, Mike <laughs> Mignola. I don't know. Uh, but it's the, the novel was also written by Christopher Golden, 
And interestingly enough, in the beginning here, it doesn't say like, you know, written by uh, Mignola and Christopher Golden. It says based on the novel by Mignola and Golden. And then it just has art, colors, letters. So it, it's obviously clearly uh, written by yeah. Golden and Mignola, but I just found it odd that they didn't actually get like the writing yeah, credit in, in, in words. Uh, but Ryan, this actually might interest you because this this is basically focusing on Norse mythology. If you see there, he's holding oh, uh, Middle-earth, Thor's hammer. Sick. Um, and that's basically it. Like Hellboy goes to um, Sweden, gets comes in contact with Milnor, and uh, that's the story takes off from there. That's kind of sick. This is a four issue series, and um, I can already tell it's a little bit rushed. Um, okay. There, it's based on, on a novel, so I, I I haven't read the novel, but I get the impression they're trying to squeeze the events of a whole novel into a single issue. Um, fans of the series will probably they're gonna have a, it. like it, but yeah. for getting into Hellboy, I don't think this is the spot. And <laughs> me trying to get into Hellboy, I don't. I kind of I kind of think I should have you know picked up where it started. Um, and here's the thing about Hellboy, like in comparison to like Spawn or something. Uh, Spawn was never good. Spawn was just always cool. Like Hellboy, the problem, with, the problem with Hellboy <laughs> is like it's really it's 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 like Spawn in the sense of like it's so expansive. And again, you can have this modern day story where like oh fuck, we're out of ideas. Let's just give them Thor's hammer. So like you have all these like spinoffs and all this like Young Hellboy was a series I think that's still going on, maybe just concluded. Um, but the original Hellboy stuff is actually like apparently really good. So yeah. like, it's not like Spawn where you're like, oh, I want to get into this character. And it's like, where do you start? Well, it's all <laughs> bad. Um, so it's 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 kind of cool. Um, and Hellboy will definitely be on our radar for a while um, because my, because the old stuff apparently is actually very good. That's the word. And I do plan on picking up and diving into Hellboy. Uh, it's just a lot. Um, yeah. I st- like I have the, the, the X-Men I still want to get into and, and read all the X-Men. Um, they who shall not be named. <laughs> but so I don't know. It's it's I have to kind of pick my battles here. Um, yeah, you're you're looking, you're looking, you're trying to get in like, I'm gonna get into this, and it's like a 10 year process for all three of them that you're simultaneously trying to get into. So so in this book, the story is rushed because they're trying to fit a lot of events in the four issues. Um the, the you know, most of the dialogue is expository. There are some great moments between Abe and Hellboy. They're like best friends, and that really bleeds through here. You see it like Mm-hmm. like Hellboy makes fun of the way Abe says something he's like like Abe's like oh good night Mrs. Eichmann and Hellboy's like oh good night Mrs. Eichmann and <laughs> Abe's just like shut up dude and that that kind of I just really enjoyed that that was um that is cool. funny but the other than that the characterization is really lacking I didn't get a sense of who Hellboy really is here other than I don't know people seem to know who he is but I know who he is but if you don't know who Hellboy is you're not gonna know after you're not gonna know yeah um so like and then you know i did did enjoy the art um it it wasn't phenomenal um there was a part some some of it was a little bit messy um for instance um there's this one flash here where hellboy picks up milnor and he gets all these visions and um it just gets a little messy in there like i like i have seen it done really i've seen things done like this really really well um but this is not one of those moments it's still good i think um but i think that uh, matt smith has a ways to go and i think given time he can he can be he has a, a clear distinct style and that is something that is uh, always, yeah, yeah. always welcome um but in, in time he will become better uh maybe by the end of the series he'll definitely improve his trade that'll be awesome but, i'd give this like a seven out of ten it wasn't um phenomenal i I am kind of liking the story. It's just that so much of it seems random to me as somebody who doesn't understand Hellboy. Um, so it like, I, I, I want, I, I simultaneously want to keep reading and I feel like I shouldn't read this and I should go back and read old Hellboy. Uh, but for fans of Hellboy, you'll probably find a lot more to dig in here than what I found, but seven out of 10. Seven out of 10. So um, how, many, how many more indie books you got? Two. Two. All right. Let's let's hit them. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, Ryan will have his chance to speak uh, when, <laughs> when, once he once he starts picking up more books. <laughs> but I will have my chance. Um, Moths number five by Michael J. Shinsky and Mike Choi. Um, Ooh, this is so. This is the penultimate issue of Moths here, and interesting. Um, it's it was okay. Like there were some <laughs> some moments where Straczynski is definitely like the the main part of this. There was a really impactful moment and a really beautiful moment in this book. Um, kind of reminded me of Jed McKay's Moon Knight num- uh, number two. Like a lot of failure, but one really impactful moment that m- for me made reading that story worthwhile. Uh-huh. Um, but um he's phoning it in because at like emily the main character here she's getting interviewed at this news station and the news station is called the non-fake news network like like dude like i'm i'm reading garth ennis's punisher right now and um there's a financial institution is referenced and it has some wicked generic almost almost um Par- uh, it's almost a parody of a financial institution that has this this, this was global in- ca- global capital investments you know like yeah, yeah. Something, something like that it, and it's so bland you almost if, if i saw global capital investments i like having a huge skyscraper in manhattan i wouldn't even blink an eye it's exactly but having it in a comic book is like yeah <laughs> That is so lame. It's almost it's so so real. It's all it's it's lame. It's, it's, it's almost yeah, it's like to the point of satirizing it. Yeah, but this was um it's just annoying. Yeah, this is just <laughs> funny. It's like what could you not come up with a better name? Was that a, I think he had a placeholder and he just sent it off to his editor and the editor was like, <laughs> publish. Let's publish yeah, yeah. it. Um you didn't even read it. Yeah, um each story has kind of been introducing a new character some of them are sticking along um some of them have kind of been dropped like the the last issue dealt with like a friend of emily's that wanted to like commit suicide and it was really heartfelt and really sincere um but that kind of stuff doesn't really get carried between issues it's almost like you know like like, anthology almost yeah it's 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 almost very yeah it's almost very much an anthology um and but I would almost like to see some of these story threads and like show me more of this person's life. Like new stuff happening all the time is a little bit extreme. Show me, um, you know, let's let's stay on. Tr- let, let's pull deeper into some of this stuff that we're working with. Let's see how these things play out. Um, I'm I'm definitely gonna pick up the last issue. I, I you know I came all this way. Um, I haven't not been enjoying this. That's for sure. Um, it's just that this issue, a little bit of it was a little bit flat. It seems like it's been a lot of ups and downs for you. Like you, you were tentative on the first issue, loved the second issue. Um, which issue is this? Like four or five. Five. five? five, yeah. And then like, I think you lo- <clears throat> loved, like didn't like three maybe and loved four. It's It's been kind of an inconsistent ride, but there's been beautiful moments throughout um, that has kind of kept you going is what it, it seems yeah. like. And it is it is those beautiful moments that do have me keep continuing to read the book. And honestly, um, that's kind of I, I have a good feeling about the conclusion of this. Um, and once again, Mike Choi's art is so weird. It's just like it weird creeps me out style kind of thing going on. Um, de- I don't know. De- I, de- I definitely not the biggest fan of that art <laughs> style. But um, hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> So what, what out of 10? I'd give it like a seven and a half out of 10. All right. Just, you know, like those beautiful moments are just, um, they're, they're too few and far between to really carry the book into anything extraordinary. Um, if you guys are tentative about dropping the book and you like, you came all this way, let's say you read issue four um, and, and you were like, Eh, not sure if you want to continue issue five is not going to do it for you um just pick up issue six because it's we all know it's going to happen she's going to die it's the whole yeah. point of the book so um yeah pick up issue six and see what happens all right now moving on to the silver coin joshua williamson oh my goodness so when i was um when i was back at home <laughs> and chad and i were picking up comic books um 
was like, oh, the silver coin. Who's it, who's it by? Um, and Chad's like, Joshua Williamson. I'm like, ooh, that's not going to be good. But was it? I shall find out now. Um, and this silver coin is such a cool concept. It's, it's hard to mess it up. The, the silver yeah. coin, for those who haven't been paying attention, is an anthology series. We've had writers, all, like a lot of really great writer, uh, writers. We've had Jeff Lemire, Chip Sidarski, um, Kelly Thompson, and now Joshua Williamson, very well regarded um, writers. Now, jo- I don't, Marion and I don't really like Joshua Williamson. Um, this is actually like some, some of his less egregious work. Um, there, there is a little bit of that Williamson exposition that you just can't avoid. Um, but like, and then overall, the, the story is uh, like, it's not the most inspired. Um, I don't know, like, it, 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 it definitely felt like a filler issue. There was a cool Spawn uh, cameo. Well, that is cool. That is cool. I'll <laughs> Michael, give it to him. Michael Walsh's art is really good. Um, this is Michael Walsh's baby. He's the, been the, the artist on every single book. He wrote issue number five, which was actually really, really good. Probably the best in the series, which blew me out of the water because I was expecting, you know, like, oh, like, let the guy who couldn't write the book write the book, and it turned out to be yeah. really good. <laughs> um, and then there's this really weird backup called uh, "Shiny Thing" by Chris Hampton and Gavin Fullerton, and it's never heard of either of them. It's basically like a Boy Scout troop is in the woods, and they find like they find the silver coin in a crow's nest, but they can't actually get to it. Um, and it kind of just flashes like all the events that we've seen. The events of the next book are alluded to, which Ron V will write. It's about like, like a gambler. I'm very excited for that. Um, but that backup was entirely unnecessary. It was <laughs> it was a weird ode to what we've seen, but at the same time, it was like I, I don't know. I just reading it was a complete waste of time. I mean, it was just there was no story. There was no thread there it was it was weird um but yeah i mean overall like this was this was one of the lower points in the installment um if you guys have have only been picking up the silver coin based on my recommendations you can probably skip this one um Mm -hmm. it's an anthology you don't need to read every single one this didn't have any deep lore or or anything like that um it does mention it mentions the events of a previous book like actually one of the books I did not enjoy was by Kelly Thompson, yeah. uh, which is like a slasher in the woods. It actually mentions that book. Like, oh, did you hear about what happened if I camp? And uh, <clears throat> I was just thinking like, oh, it's weird that this was also bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the curse. It's the actual silver coin. Yeah. So I give this like a 7.5 out of 10. And for Joshua Williamson, that's pretty good. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. And that's the indie books. Um, yeah, they be the indie books. So big indies. Um, I, the reason the reason I think we like to spend most time on indies is number one, um, we usually don't pick up the same indie series. So when we tell when we talk about it, it's the first time the other person's hearing about it. And also, indie books deserve a lot more love just because some of the best comics are indie books. Actually, most of the best comics are indie books. Um, and they're just really cool, uh, and I, you know, so you you have a really good gauge about what 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 to uh, what to look out for essentially. And um, you know, I'm sure we'll get to it at the end. But you know, the silver coin coming by Rom V is a, 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 is surely going to be incredible, um, along with Shipstar season series. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it that, that that at the end. We're gonna move on to Marvel now. Interesting week for Marvel, um, and I'm gonna start it off. With Moon Knight, number four. And when Chad said, well, <laughs> you know, Moon Knight, number two, when one kind of, one one moment is so cool, it makes the whole thing worth it. I was like, yeah, like, but like, what the hell is this kind of? Like, go ahead. Go ahead with what you're going to say. I was going to say, one moment in this basically ruins the book. It's the exact opposite thing. Um, not to say the book was necessarily this book wasn't necessarily very great either. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that. So so essentially my thoughts are this book, J- Jed McKay 
is trying to be really deep and emotional, but it's just not good. Like he's like, it's like, it's like I'm 12 and this is deep kind of thing. He's like, I can't even bear to look myself in the face. You're like, because I'm a symbol and a symbol can't cry or some like crap like that. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, shut up. Like, this isn't Moon Knight is the, is the fundamental problem with this book is this isn't Moon Knight. It, it's in the same way I, uh, I, I, Chad and I talk about, well, the MCU, like Tom Holland's Spider-Man. He looks like Spider-Man. He has the powers of Spider-Man, but fundamentally as a character, I do not feel like this is Spider-Man. It's the same thing with Moon Knight. Like, yeah, he's called Moon Knight and he looks like Moon Knight, but I hear this guy talk. I'm like, this is not Moon Knight. And no. it makes me really worried because <clears throat> usually when an MCU project is coming, they try to um, make the character in the comics more like the one from the show. And we all know why this series is getting published. It's because of the Disney Plus series. But if this is what Moon Knight's going to be like, all the charm is he's just Batman. He literally is just Batman in this. Um, a poorly written Batman. Yeah, that. that. Um, a, a poorly written, you know, like half the fun of, of Moon Knight is his multiple personality thing. Yeah. That got touched on once. And like he talks to his therapist about it a couple of times. Um, but like... Like, one of the coolest things in Brian McAbendis' Ultimate Spider-Man run that had Moon Knight in it was you ne- Moon Knight wasn't sure who was going to be in charge on any given moment. It could be yeah. Moon Knight, literally, like, you know, like, the the the, the high the, priest the, of Khonshu. Yeah. Um, it could be Mark Spector. It could be Stephen Grant. It could be, it could be a little girl. Yeah, um, it's, that's the best part. That's literally the charm. That's yeah. what makes him not Batman. Um. And there's nothing. It's just a guy being sad. It's literally just uh, being sad. And not like sad, like it's well-written, like this is an accurate no. portrayal of being what's sad. This is like what Jed McKay thinks like angsty 12-year-olds are like. Um, and it's not good. Uh, and Greer shows up. They fight um, Jigsaw, which is kind of cool. Yeah, like, but like the whole motivation between fight, like like the, like the villain has him fight Jigsaw um and because, a, a, yeah. after he fights him he's like you don't own me i'm like dude you just did exactly what he wanted you to do yeah, yeah. like what do you what do you mean yeah but the reason i have the rest of the series ordered is andrea capuccio's art it is just phenomenal it is so great um it's it's like uh it's it's phenomenal i adore it uh it's so marco chichetto esque but it's like marco chichetto but if it was like this kind of ethereal moon knight thing like it's so awesome um but but it's getting to the point where it's like well like the art's great but the story is so lackluster like it's essential and it's essentially an anthology series there's there was like in the first issue they set up two villains and chad and i both said both these villains are so sick and now they've basically been dealt with. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the they've been entirely dealt with. And, like, that was all the appeal. And I don't want to find some stupid... I don't want to read about some stupid, edgy Moon Knight trying to find learn how to love himself or something. Yeah. Seems- like... like <laughs> part of the, like part of the appeal... Like, like, Daredevil can be dark and edgy because, like, it, it's a man, like basically refusing to acknowledge that he's like just clinically un- insane. insane. <laughs> um and that's I love that. But I like Moon Knight, I didn't buy this issue. Ryan bought it. I read it before Ryan did. Um so I if Ryan's gonna keep ordering it, I'm gonna keep reading it. Uh, but I'm not gonna buy it myself. I'm gonna I have I already have the rest of the series ordered. <clears throat> um it's just such a train wreck at this point. Like it's it's the like the fact this is storytelling we're four issues into the series the first issue established the two main villains of the series that chad and i both agreed were cool the second one was about a janitor who controlled people through his sweat the third issue moon knight beats the shit out of the main physical antagonist and now in the fourth issue he's dealt with the main mental antagonist and now for the next three issues he's just going to run around being sad um and i don't like i don't care anymore like it's it's not good storytelling um the, the series should have climaxed with these two villains or like the the last issue should have been the two villains getting together deciding to take down moon knight and moon knight because he's moon knight 
takes him down and saves the neighborhood like he's supposed to. But yeah. no, he dealt with them so easily without even breaking a sweat, and he's just sad. And it's not and interesting. Like, all right, guys, I'm a huge fan of the secret of secret identities for superheroes, and they seem to be disappearing in today's landscape. post Iron Man world. Um, but this handled his secret identity so poorly. Oh my um, god. It's basically like like an open secret, and but he still acts like he has one. I'm going on um, uh, the Marvel Wiki right now and seeing what Moon Knight's identity is, whether it's public, private, or known to authorities. And right now, it says it is a public identity. So why is he trying to hide it? Yeah, it's, then why is he? Well, like they, we get this half baked explanation, and it's the worst part of the book um, for why he like still tries to keep her secret identity um but it's not, like he he treats it simultaneously like no one can know but then like you know who i am like kind of yeah, that and, shit and, and it's just so infuriating and like opens like it's like people can find out like yeah. the clues are like he produced a movie under the name mark specter about the moon knight like what <laughs> apparently it's like, apparently it's like bruce wayne funding batman inc it's like yeah okay. Like, but but like that made sense because like no, Dick, that was Gray- sick. Dick Grayson was masquerading as as uh, or was being was, it was yeah, right time. when he got got right when he, he got back. And it's yeah, some, Morrison, so, so. so Bruce Wayne showed like is standing there, and then Batman and Robin are there, and they're like, oh, like Bruce Wayne can't be Batman. Batman's right there, you know. It's, it's the old like Superman <laughs> puts on Batman's costume or Batman puts on exactly. Superman's costume. Or something. Um, but yeah, yeah I give this, this issue bad. like a like a like a six. The art was great, six, but. The dialogue, some of the dialogue's pretty, pretty, pretty snappy. Um, I like the end, kind of. When uh, there's one line in this entire thing that I like, that uh, but hey, lots of hours till sun up, till the new day earns the sun. That's yeah. that's relatively hopeful. Um, for such a fucking horrible book, like it's all right. Yeah, and uh, Jed McKay is also jumping on um, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah. I'm not happy about that. I want him yeah. to stay where he is. Six out of ten. Uh, <laughs> don't pick it up. Don't pick up the trade unless the last three issues are the best thing I've ever read, which they're not going to be. So let's move on to Spider-Man. I'm interested because uh, while we were setting up, I was like, oh, crap, I forgot to subscribe to Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And now I'm subscribed to Spider-Man. So I'm excited to see how it's going. It's going pretty good, I have to admit. <laughs> um, I like This issue was written by uh, Kelly Thompson. With art by um, let's see, Pacelli is the name. I'm gonna Sarah Pacelli. Sarah Pacelli. Sarah Pacelli, and um, this like there have been a couple of backup issues written by Kelly Thompson, and because she's alternating with Zeb Wells and um, Khalid and Ahmed, I'll, yeah, and it's and so I was like, okay, are they gonna be able to handle like changing tones and stuff? And um, while yeah. The, the story elements that um, Thompson had introduced, these two characters, uh, they've been brought up throughout her backups and side issues and everything like that. They are here, but the primary focus is a continuation of the story that, um, that Zeb Wells was telling. And it works really, really well, and I, I really did enjoy it. This is a much slower issue. It's it's more dealing with with Ben Riley finally adjusting to being Spider Man. At the same time, we do get, um, we do get those moments of of, of what ha- what's happening with Peter. Um, so he's still very much a part of this book, even if he's not necessarily the main focus. Um, a pe- but Black Cat shows up and is overlooking a room with where MJ is. Um, MJ and Black Cat are gonna get their own book called MJ and Black Cat, and um. Yeah. Isn't that written by Jed McKay? I yes, it is, and that is going to be a dumpster fire, and it's probably going to interfere with this book and this is book's quality. And for that, I am very not happy about. Um, but yes, yeah, Sarah Tom- like Kelly Thompson, like I, I, some of her work I haven't loved, but this takes its time. It makes sense. Everything here makes sense. There's no plot threads that are left standing it's all there and it all works um and then of course morbius pops up at the end um just yes for a he's moment. going to be um part of the next story arc which i'm really excited about him and craven 
Yeah, so um, I'm craving these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, of course, that's gonna that's I think a lot of that is because of the Morbius movie. Um, yes, this says it, this book, like number 78, was on sale um this past week, but I didn't pick it up, so I'm gonna check if I missed it because that would suck. Um, I think... yeah, October 27th, it was out. Number number seventy yeah seventy seven but seventy eight I'm talking about like the, the ne- like the next issue. This, oh no no that doesn't come out yet. I already have it ordered. I no, you have number seventy eight ordered. Yeah. Are you jumping on? Yes, I'm. I this uh, little spoiler. I did know Chad's thoughts on it that it was good. Uh, I know, but um, because I, I I wanted to know if it was good enough to jump on. Uh, and so yes, the next issue I will be jumping on. Um. Yeah, sir. Uh, Kelly Thompson is going to rewriting. It seems like you're going to be get, doing a two and two kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, which I think is great. I think it'll help maintain the integrity of the tone. Yeah, that'll be um, awesome. And you know, it, this says on sale um, this past Wednesday, but it's coming out this coming Wednesday. Um, it just had me in a panic because I, I'm in a panic about mi- mi- um, not reading a book. If that were some of these other books, that wouldn't really bother yeah. me. This, you can tell I'm digging it because I was like, oh no. So, <laughs> Yeah, um, I'd give this like an eight and a half, nine out of ten. Um, wow, probably nine out of ten, just because it's, I uh, you know eight, eight and a half because I don't think Sarah Pacelli is my favorite artist. I mean, look at Aunt May's face. Oh, what is oh, going on oh, there? Yeah, I, mean, not, I have to look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, not a huge fan of that. In my, it, <laughs> to be fair, not a huge fan that? of that. Um, yeah, she kind of looked like she had a stroke. Yeah, and then I don't know these these she, the faces are weird. Like what the faces that? are it's the like, faces are weird. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, I'm digging yeah. it. So right. definitely jump on the Amazing Spider Man because it's a cool series. To put it mildly, our next book is a cool series. It's Daredevil. Uh, I I'm looking up at my Chip Zdarsky Daredevil uh, Electra. Uh, poster next to my I to, I tore out something from the previous catalog of the next issue. Um, this series is just it's chef's kiss. But how does this issue stack up, Chad? I want to know your thoughts because I think we might have a little bit different thoughts. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Yes, yes, the torn out. <laughs> I have that um, as well. Hung up at my room at home. Over, so this book, I did very thoroughly enjoy it. Um, there are moments when it does feel rushed. Um, but this, honestly, this is one of my favorite interpretations of the bullseye. Like, I would and, agree. and I love the way that um, Electric gets in the bullseye's head to win the fight. Um, it's because, you know, there's several bullseyes and you just fight all of them and you know, Bullseye killed her once, so obviously they're they're e- pretty e- evenly matched. Um, but it's just, I felt I felt like Electra should have had a little bit more of an advantage because. But then again, she's up against multiple Bullseyes. Um, I it have was to say, interesting. Um, I, I, I I'll real quick. Um, I do kind of like the idea that like. You know, Electra obviously couldn't even take on one bullseye back in the day. So, like, now she's taking on several. She outwits him um, because she knows she can't win in a physical fight, which I like because then, like, uh, the varying power levels in comics pisses me off. So, like, I'm glad that Chip wasn't like, Electra solos four bullseyes. It's like, well, then he's not really a threat, is he? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 like, the, the worst bullseye fight um, between Daredevil and Bullseye was in – um Charles Sewell's run when basically Daredevil throws his billy club at him and that's it and it was I was like that's bullseye that's the guy that's gonna someday kill Daredevil like you gotta yeah. respect his insanity it's the arch almost. enemy dude it's like if Batman's like Batarang Joker's dead yeah Fucking um, Bane's dead but if you guys don't know this is number 35 of issue 36 this series will be wrapping up um, with the next issue, and then we'll be getting the Devil's Reign like event, which Ryan and I are very excited about. Um, but in order to get us to Devil's Reign, this book was just a little bit rushed. 
Um, yeah. There's a moment when a bunch of superheroes appear, and I just wish, I just wish that we would have gotten m- like one page of them talking about whatever is happening in, in New York that they have to handle. It, it really did feel very rushed, um, which Zdarsky usually takes his time. So it was really uncharacteristic for the series. Um, we've been building up this multiple bullseye. We've been building up bullseye for, for like the entire series. Um, but we've been building up this multiple bullseye thing for like three or four issues at this point. Um, and we kind of really only got to see them in action a little bit in the last issue. Um, and then like throughout this entire issue. So um, not that I need like a four or five issue conclusion for every story arc. It just kind of felt like it was set up, set up, set up, set up, set up. And we had like an issue of half just to conclude it, um, which wasn't great. Not to say that the conclusion was not well executed, um, but clearly it's like, we need to move on to Devil's Reign. Um, It's it's very clear that, you know, there's stuff about, obviously it's the promotional material, so I can, you know, spoil it, but like with Kingpin um, and Typhoid Mary and the things going on there, I will not mention any money more, um, but, uh, with with that, we, we need to move on to Devil's Reign, and clearly the multiple bullseye arc is just like, well, we need to get this done. I The way Matt's used in this issue, I'm not like a massive fan um, in the one, in, you know what I mean? Like, I like it, but it was just like, oh, all right, like, cool. It was kind of weird. I felt, I felt a little weirded out by it, honestly. It's out of nowhere for no particular reason. And it just felt, it felt like Zdarsky needed Matt there, needed Matt at that point to do that thing because it would progress the story rather than like, it's a natural progression of things. It, it, that's just how I felt. Um, I'm not going to say what it is because we don't spoil Daredevil because uh, it's you, like, you need to be reading it. If you can take one thing from any Wednesday Warrior episode, you need to be reading Daredevil. If you actually consider yourself a comic fan, you need to be reading Daredevil. Um, and I think now is probably a good time to jump on. Um, read issue 36, get prepared for Devil's Reign, read Devil's Reign, and then Zdarsky's back on Daredevil, and you'll have all the information you need to know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I Personally, I wish that this was just issue 35, and issue 36 was longer. And it could have included whatever setup they needed to do, um, like you know, have basically the con- the conclusion of the fight in the beginning of thirty six, and thirty six is an exercise issue just to um, give us more time to set up Devil's Reign. It's still a, this is still a good book. Like say like no matter what like yeah <laughs> this, this this has been Daredevil at its lowest, and I would still give it like an eight point seven. I I'd, I'd probably give it a nine point four. I, I, I enjoyed the shit out of this. I'm I'm honestly just a sucker for Electra's Daredevil. You show yeah. me Electra's Daredevil and I'm, I'm I'm there. I mean, honestly, the only problem was the pacing. I completely and, agree. Um, uh, all the, the all the story beats are there. Um, there's no there like there's no holes in this. This is like an airtight story, and um, where like you know you're not left hanging on some things. It's all there. Um, it was just the pacing was just way t- this like Marvel give us like an extra five pages for daredevil come yeah, on like come on this is probably your best-selling book please please um but yeah but, that was a, a rare moment i think um it was just to me it was i have high hopes on it so i gave it a little bit of, of lower rating um daredevil pretty much is just rated against itself on its scale like we just have this uh, standard for it so like if we give something for instance chad give it an 8.7 if we give something else an 8.7, it doesn't mean it's on the caliber of Daredevil. It's just relation to other Daredevil, pretty much. Um, yeah, we our, our rating scale is jank. It's so fucked. It's, it's so fucked. There's, there's no objectivity there The funny whatsoever. part is, is like, earlier in, the, earlier in, like, when you're talking about Primordial, like, I fucking hated this book. It sucked. Five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, that's average. And like, but it's set. We no, 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 no. Like seven and a half is our average. Yeah. Our scale yeah. is pretty much five. Like five is if you get a five, it's real bad. Um, yeah. Think, think of like the the American uh, grading system, where it's like like a C is average, and that's a you got seventy percent of the things right. You know, we do have the amazing. That's a perfect analysis. So like, yes, think of the American grading scale. Um, 
So that's done with Marvel. Let's move on to DC um, because I don't know how long we've been recording, but this is a hefty episode. Um, but you know, we will we will continue on. Uh, you go first because I think you have two more books than I do. So you'll do you, me, you, I got and then we'll talk. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, a book I comics. A book I officially yeah, Ryan dropped. Drop this book. And I was ready to drop this book as well. I admit, I was <laughs> ready to just cut my losses and stop reading um, this book. But Tell me about Detec- it. Detective Comics number ten forty four comes out, and it's it's pretty good. <laughs> you know, and and I'm I'm almost, I'm disappointed that the book was good because <laughs> you're uh, ready. Good enough to save the, the the issues upon issues of torment we've suffered. She Tamaki has been dragging this out for like twelve issues. This is what like thirty two, I think. Ten thirty two. For thirty, for, yeah, for twelve issues then of of uh, this one this one story, the most and, uninteresting story too. And it's it's like. It, it, the characters are great, and that's the worst part is because Nakano is great. Batman, yeah, I she love writes a, a really good Batman, and I love the bat like Oracle's role here and and uh, Deb Donovan. I love Deb Donovan. Deb Donovan's so sad. Um, but I just I am. It's ugh, the story is just not there. <laughs> um, there are a lot of um threads here that just things that just don't add up story-wise like in the previous issue like this john doe care like in the morgue is, is clearly leaking on an, like some sort of something that's alive clearly yes, something clearly and and cl- they, these guys just don't see and they they saw it and here it's still <laughs> there and and it was going down the drain in the last issue and now it's, it's still in the morgue and i'm like i'm like Show us it. Show it going down the drain again. If you want to bring back things up that the audience already knows, like you don't. She she writes a lot of this like she's still trying to attract an audience. Like she's still trying to attract new readers to her book instead of continuing with the story and appeasing the readers that she has. Um, I like. If you want to attract new readers, finish your arc and start a new. Yes, one, like start a know? new arc. Um. <sighs> And now, granted, some runs are great where they're just issue after issue after issue, like one or two issues arcs where there's mini stories and they just keep going. Those you can jump in on any time, basically, like Mark Wade's Daredevil. You almost jump in Mark Wade's Daredevil and you feel like it's been going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's the mark of a good run and not just a collection of arcs or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with having a collection of arcs. Scott Snyder's Batman is a collection of arcs. Of arcs yeah. Um, and it's and they're great arcs, but um, ah, this is just a drag. This is Nakano's Nightmare Part Two. No, this is my nightmare. <laughs> this is Chad's Nightmare Part Twelve. <laughs> um, but like, I like I I I have to say I do honestly enjoy reading these character interactions. I like the way she writes these characters, and I like seeing them in this setting. Um. And it's a way for me to keep up with current Batman comics without having to read, read Batman. Tiny as Batman. So I don't know. This was good, like decent. Like everything is there except for like the, the story, right? The art, Dan Moore on the art is phenomenal. Um so good. He's got he's he's and you know, even Peter uh, Bogdanovic, who Ryan and I don't prefer as the artist, we still enjoy him. He's great. Absolutely. And, and Dan Moore's art is great. And and the dialogue is pretty great. And the characters are great. And the pacing is is tied to the story. So it's not as good. But it's it's just uh I don't I don't know. I feel like I part of me wants to blame Fear State and say maybe she can't start a new arc because of Fear State, but like this is, been, Yeah, the arc should have been over before Fear State. <laughs> like yeah, like I like. I feel like Detective Comics always gets overlooked as the Batman comics. It's always number two, 
So I, I feel like maybe that they're just like, oh, just like don't do anything. You can't really do anything with Batman. Then then, then fine, give us um a Deb Donovan, Mayor Nakano story. That's that'd be awesome. You've been writing really well. Um, yeah. So I'd give this like a eight out of ten. Everything is there except for the story, basically. Now let's move on to Loki, my second favorite book on the shelf, and by far the best Batman book. Batman Reptilian. Um, <laughs> this book is so fucking whack. And I swear to God, the first, the first fucking words is Batman telling Killer Croc to, to and I quote, you can't see it, but Batman <laughs> talks to Killer Croc and he goes, well, go on then, suckle it to, to Killer Croc. Um, like, basically, the beginning of this book is Batman goading Killer Croc into fucking this giant lizard. Um, and, <laughs> and the fact that that is the A plot to the best Batman book on the shelves is just to show you where we're at in terms of Batman content. Chad talked about Garth Ennis' Punisher, and he was telling me about it, and I was like, this man is so whack, and I love it. Like, because, like, he he's talking about like 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 killer crocs like he, like his, his he has like simultaneously a penis and a vag- a vagina like switch with the seasons and he can like asexually reproduce and stuff like that like it's so whack like and and he's like basically batman saying like like killer croc you gotta fuck this monster because the future of gotham depends on it and killer croc's like no 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 and he's like all right fine we have to kill it then and he's like such a dick, like Batman's such a dick. And I love it because like, basically it's kind of this, this is just like a buddy cop story now in like a really weird way where like one of the cops is like goading another one to have sex with like a horse or something. Like that's what it, that's what it would be like. Um, but like the, the funny part is, is like <laughs> sometimes people say in writing, like if, if, if the characters aren't like afraid or anything, the stakes are the stakes are gone but that's not the, that's not the the case like killer croc is clearly like terrified of this this beast and batman's like so chill like he's like he doesn't even break a sweat like he's so chill dealing with this like monster that single-handedly killed his entire rogues gallery like he's so chill um and i love it liam sharp's art is literally insanely awesome like i love it uh it's very dave mckean arkham asylum as i've mentioned every single thing but like, like, look at this freaking thing like that. It's so whack. Like it's, I don't even know what to say like anymore because it's like basically Batman goading Killer Croc to fuck this thing. Um, but then like actually like story progression as well. Like it's, it's so beautiful. It's actually like, and it's kind of beautiful as well. Like Batman's talking about like, like this thing, like being a mom, it's like Frankenstein kind of as well. Um, like but garth ennis it's like if garth ennis wrote frankenstein like they'd they'd be like dr victor you gotta fuck this thing or something like it'd be so whack the mob's like forcing victor frankenstein to have sex with the monster like it it would be like it's so whack but it's also simultaneously so beautiful um i just really adore it and i want this to come out in hardcover so i can own it and read it over and over again um like this is my like you know like your guilty comfort characters where it's like like my comfort character is Jason Todd. It's like he's like emotionally messed up and a murderer and everything. Like this is lo- like my guilty pleasure comfort book. It's like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes on a Tuesday night, I just want to sit back, eat a sandwich, and listen to Batman go to Killer Croc and having sex with a giant lizard. Like I love it. I love it. Um, and it's and it's well written. Like it's like if it was if it was poorly written, it'd be bad. But it's just hilarious and it's amazing and it's not trying to be funny, but it is. Garth Ennis has a wonderful sense of humor, and I see that in his Punisher book. Is there's so much humor in in the Punisher, so much really weird, stupid humor, but it it, it works for the story. And this, and it rubs off on his characters in a weird and it, it, when when he wants it to. And and this is a bat. This is Batman with a sense of humor. Yeah. And, it, and it, it, it that's almost more realistic because like if I had seen half the stuff. In order to stay sane as Batman, yeah. I would have to have a sense of humor about it. Um, and Grant Morrison does the same thing in Arkham Asylum. Like, it's an uncharacteristically angry, yet, like, lighthearted, funny Batman. Like, he's he cracks jokes, but he's also, like, kind of insane. 
Um, and I love it. I love it. It's so great. Uh, Garth Ennis gets it. Um, yeah, it's it's just so great. So yeah, this is uh this is a ten out of ten. Like no no cap involved. It's ten out of ten. I love it. Um, and I can't wait for the hardcover. Two ten out of tens, not for Daredevil. Very uh. Whoa! 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 whoa. Um, one of those was still for Chip though, so we gotta give respect. Oh, um, respect the goat. I I'm gonna open it with another ten out of ten, and this was interesting. This was Ron V Swamp Thing has been coming to um its conclusion, and this was just the tightest issue. It made. Every everything was so so great. He's he had a number of small arcs, a single offshoot issue, a number. Basically, he had like this has been a mini run. This hasn't been a ten issue arc. This has been a mini run. But now all those elements are coming together in the conclusion. Um, honestly, the only problem that I have with this story is the cover because it gives away what happens in the book and. Um, you know, brother versus brother, and um, I wish I hadn't, I didn't even, I don't even look at covers of most comic books I read, I just, yeah, if, if I'm reading it, I don't look at the cover, because the cover spoils it so often, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even notice what this was until just now, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, this was so good, a- everything was there, and um, this is such a, such a great Swamp Thing story, and the pacing is great. The storytelling is great. The characters are great. Uh, this is such a wonderful, wonderful Swamp Thing story. It, it is such a great love letter to Alan Moore's while still pushing the character in a new direction with a new character as the Swamp Thing, but still maintaining the elements of what makes Swamp Thing great. It's, it is, um, it's truly something that I, I think everybody who's enjoyed Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, which is just about anyone who's ever read it. So Alan Moore's Swamp Thing is, is one of those books that's just un, an, like an underrated gem. And that's yeah. because it's about, it's about a character named The Swamp Thing. Um, but most people who read The Swamp Thing by Alan Moore enjoy it. And if you enjoy that, you will enjoy this. So it's just... I... I am loving this. You will you don't ha- you don't even have to read Alan Moore Swamp Thing to love this, but I strongly suggest you do because Alan Moore Swamp Thing is phenomenal. Um, oh, but it, it's a, like you need to get the trade is what you're saying. It's a must buy. Yeah, I'm, I I'm definitely I'm gonna I'm trying I want I'm, I keep on looking for the deluxe edition. Um, they 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 announced two paperbacks, but I'm like no, give me give me the, I, the, the ten issue deluxe. Exactly. Exactly. Um, wow, so three 10 out of 10s, and none of them Daredevil or Nightwing, which is crazy. Um, yeah, I think this is the first Swamp Thing 10 out of 10, because it was... Um, it's the best issue of the series? Yeah. It, 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 wow. It, it deserves it, yeah. Uh, wow. So, yeah, some great DC books, um, some highs, some lows. Uh, but now we're going to move on. Uh, do you just have the two left that we share? Yeah, uh, I, have, no, I have two more. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Never, oh, um, I completely forgot. So I have another one that was, it, it seemed like the last one came out a week and a half ago or two or two weeks ago, but um, this is from this past week. And this is um, the Arkham City, The Order of the World by Dan Waters and art by Danny. Um, this is a really good book. I think anyone who's even remotely interested in Batman should be reading this book because um, Batman is not in this book. But this is like a Gotham City book, and it's the characters are so great. Um, there's 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 oh, there's some parts of it that there's like the, the, basically the one character, um, she seems to be getting lucky more than anything. Um, every other character, like it's very grounded in reality. Bad things happen to them because these things happen. But this character is almost floating on air. Whereas these horrible things happening happening all around her, and, and she's able to kind of get by scot free while at the same time being closest to the actual danger, um, so that kind of inhibits my full enjoyment. But I mean, other than that, it is just this is such a, a great Ryan. You got to read this. Like, I, I'm gonna I give this to you. This is yeah, this is great. Like you read the first one, right? I did. I did. Yeah, this is. Oh, the art is great. Um, I love the art. Asriel is in it and he's great. Uh Dan Waters writes a great Asriel. Sweet. Um, 
Sweet. This is, I feel like this could be taking place in current continuity. I don't know if it is. Interesting. It really feels like it is. Um, it mentions like the attack on Arkham Asylum where like, everybody died except for the one guy. And it feels like Fear State is happening because they're like, oh, they say that Batman is dead. That's what they said um, during Fear State. There was like an announcement. Um, and but like it's basically the city goes on and what's not happening in you know with the superheroes stopping fear state this is what's happening it feels like that i'm not sure if that's, that's the case. awesome that is so um, awesome but this is it really does feel like that and i really i don't know if this is in continuity i can't tell but this is so good it's basically if it's out of continuity it's out of continuity like up until current events so that's so uh, yeah i gotta definitely check that out so what would you give it out of 10 9.4 wow wow yeah. that's amazing incredibly solid on that wait okay <laughs> anticipation this issue came out the week before halloween so not this past wednesday but the wednesday before um it's jeff Loeb's the long halloween holiday special um uh, by jeff Loeb and tim sale um the goat Honestly, Tim Sale's art has gotten better over the last 20 years. Oh, my um, Lord. He's improved his trade, and that is honestly the part that makes me recommend this most. Now, if you enjoyed The Long Halloween and Dark Victory, this takes place after Dark Victory, um, and it feels like he like Jeff Loeb does want to tie up some um, – loose ends at the yeah. same time he does create a little bit of um continuity errors um it but not not necessarily with his story but the long halloween is is semi-canonical it's much like yeah the it's, of that fear. it's most batman fans consider it to be in canon um sometimes it's even been the events of it have been alluded to in canon um it's but, become such a central reading that it's been like basically dubbed as canonical yeah um and so it, but since that's the case there are elements of this that make action that don't make sense in actual batman continuity which yeah. is aggravates me a little bit because the whole point of the long halloween was it didn't have to be tied to continuity but it's so great it has to be part of it you know what i mean yeah exactly um, but yeah it, it like uh it, the main villain here is the, is um calendar man um and that, that was kind of lame there are some cool i wish it was scarecrow um, um jeff Loeb writes the best scarecrow in my opinion yeah i i agree and robin's in here robin gets a decent amount of uh that's, not, that, but that's a good based. amount of time um but honestly the best part of this book is just Jeff Lo uh, Tim Sales art and oh, um he now this doesn't necessarily detract from the legacy it doesn't add to it um it is eight dollars so if unless you're unless you really enjoyed Long Halloween this is not essential reading at all this is just um if you enjoy this is also very Halloween themed so it's great to read around around like reading around Halloween it is nice um, it is nice with the fall breeze. Yeah, it gets you in the mood. Um, <laughs> I do like the way Jeff Loeb writes Batman. His Batman is very brutal. Like at the start of um, um, Dark Victory, we see a brutal yeah. Batman, and you do see that Batman here. Um, but I mean, overall, it's if you missed it, you're not missing much. Um, and I think at the same time, he was afraid to have it do anything because yeah. if 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 this was so good then they have to reprint the long halloween and they just reprinted the long halloween in they the last edition did, yeah. um for the for the movie um but yeah this is uh i give it like an eight like interesting nothing phenomenal um some a couple of great moments most of it's filler i i think that i don't think this needed to be as long as it is it's a long halloween huge and uh <laughs> you didn't, you didn't but, appreciate it yeah the the art is i just love the art oh tim sales just the goat so yeah eight out of ten sweet 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 <sighs> so our last two books of the night start with this one task force z 
by Matthew Rosenberg and Ed Barrows. Uh, Ed, Eddie Barrows, you're going to recognize from Chip Zdarsky's Red Hood story um, in Batman Urban Legends. Um, and Matthew Rosenberg has been writing um, a lot of the backups for Task Force C and Detective Comics and things like that. Um, but clearly they have the artist set on who, on Jason Todd as Ed Barrows. Um, not my favorite, but it could be worse is all I'm going to say. Um, but I think he fits the tone of this book much better than he fit the tone of the other book. Interestingly enough, Mr. Freeze in both of the books. Um, interesting there. But yeah, he uh, he's a pretty good artist. He does, I think he does the rogues better than he actually does Jason himself. Um, but what are your what are your thoughts, Chad? Because I'm interested to see your um, thoughts. No, I have to agree. Like Eddie Burrows is Red Hoods is very bland. Um, but I mean, you know, crazy quilt is looking awesome and he um, man bat specifically man bat looks fantastic bane looks great and yeah it's i don't know i like it's just I kind did, of annoying I, yeah look at his i mean wow i did enjoy the addition of all these scars on jason's back that i love cool. that yeah um because it makes sense jason's body was burned in an explosion um it makes and sense beat, for that um yeah beat the shit out of like he should be <clears throat> yeah now the, the, the whole premise of Task Force D was set up in the backup of Detective Comics, and the first issue was basically Red Hood harassing Deb Donovan to work on a case together, and then I didn't read the rest of the backups, and now here we are. Um, I, I, kinda, I want to go back and read those backups because I have them lying around, um, but this... I thought it was going to be kind of like a zombie story, but it's like they're not fighting zombies. They are zombies. Yeah, basically a lot of the Batman rogue ga- rogues gallery has been reanimated and um, with these Lazarus edibles, they call them. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what um, the fuck? And um, Jason is working with um, this project, a Halperin, a Halperin. And um, they're, he, it's basically, you know, superheroes working for a corporate entity slash government entity. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm going to go uh, when we're done reviewing the thing. I want to talk about Jason Todd role in the DC universe for a minute because I'm very passionate. But um, um, it, it's all right. Like, I don't like it's fine. I think it's an all right book. Yeah, this, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I already subscribed to the series. On Me Full too. Box. Um, a little pre, a little bit of a itchy trigger finger there. Yeah. Um. I, I, but I guess I'm gonna keep reading it. Like, like I think that um, Rosenberg writes a pretty good Jason Todd. Um, I would agree with you. And like, I do enjoy the concept of this Task Force Z kind of thing because I mean Jason's been resurrected. They've all been resurrected. Um. It's just um. I don't know, the, the whole semi-blackmailed to work uh, vigilante, you know, they, they know Jason's secret identity, which always he's I hate that. I, especially the Bat family. Yeah. Like, you know, one of them, you know all of them. Yeah, I mean, now, knowing... Sorry, that's my roommate. Um, knowing... He knowing, sucks. Knowing, yeah, I also love continue <laughs> knowing knowing batman it's just like I, he could have scrubbed all records of his connections to jason todd but still like someone's gonna be like oh like they're you know you, bruce lane buried jason todd there's there's a funeral you know what i mean yeah like and and like it's very public knowledge the the orphans he adopts like gotham knows i mean it's like celebrities so um yeah they're clearly DC clearly wants Jason to lead some sort of suicide squad, whether it's task force C, whether it's the suicide squad. And are we ever getting a second issue of Brian Azzarello's one? Um, yeah, what I don't the know. Hell happened there. Uh, but like, is that on box? I got to check that out. Yeah. We have to look after this recording, but clearly like they want Jason, they don't want Jason to be on his own. They want him to lead a team. Um, and to be fair, they've kind of had that narrative since 2011. Um, and it doesn't work because Dick Grayson, yeah, he's a leader. Tim Drake is a leader. Damian Wayne is a leader. Jason, 
not really. So it's like kind of ironic that they're throwing the one guy, like they're like, it's like the situational comedy thing. They throw the one guy who shouldn't be leading as the leader of all these freaking teams. And like at, to, at some point, like it's so ironic because they're like, they keep using him as like, oh, he's not a leader, but they force him to lead. Well, like he's been like leading teams consistently every month for like the last 10 years. So like at yeah, what I mean, point does he become a leader? Way, way back to from um, Red Hood and the Outlaws. I mean, that was basically, he he was the focal point, but he had no control over them because he's not a leader. If he was a leader, he'd, they, he'd be like, all right, guys, we're going to do this. And be like, all right, Jason. But in that, he's like, guys, I, I, need, I need you to help me with this uh, <laughs> thing. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll help you out, Jason. Like they're um, all kind of a bunch of fucks, so it works out. Yeah, but in in this, he has no control over these zombies. Uh, he's like, "Don't kill anybody," and proceed to kill everybody. Yeah, he's room. like, "Don't kill anybody." <laughs> yeah, and then uh, he never even mentions that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just so whack. I I kind of I I get, there are parts of it I really enjoyed. Um, I liked Rosen- it overall, but. Rosenberg's doing like an okay job with what he has to work with, but I I just really I really feel like they DC editorial put him in this position because we wouldn't get two. Um, yeah, Ryan's pointing out the. Uh, I just want to tell a quick story of um, we <laughs> were reading we were reading to, we were sitting reading together and Chad goes oh my god Scott Snyder's writing a Batman Fortnite tie-in. And I just thought it was so funny because, like, that sentence encapsulates where we are in comics. Like, probably the biggest writer in current comics is writing a Batman Fortnite tie-in. But, yeah, I mean, anyways, if you guys are big Jason Todd fans, you'll probably find a lot to enjoy here. If you're not big Jason Todd fans and you want to get into character, read the uh, Batman Urban Legends uh, by Chip Zdarsky. You'll find a great Red Hood um story there in cheer is the name of that story um this yeah, i think i think you're absolutely right if you're not a fan of the character um you're not going to gain much out of this yeah i i, I the backup the, the backup was better honestly the this the little backup of of jason investigating what's going on and then getting roped into into it it's um I don't know. I, I completely like Jason, agree. I feel like Jason. I feel like Jason's going to end up shutting down Task Force Z, but then there was secret identity and yeah, it's and there's going to be no retaliation, and we're never going to hear about it again. Yeah. So, we will see. We will see. Now, uh, the, what would you give it out of ten? I'd give it like a like an eight out of ten, maybe seven I'd, and a half I'd, out of ten. I'd say seven and a half. Eight is fair. Last but not least, this book is so freaking whack. It's Dark Knights of Steel. Uh, I was super, super duper excited for this book. I have to say, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Um, t- this is by Tom Taylor. He's he's writing this, all, this another series for Marvel called uh, the Dark Ages. Both very similar titles. I mean, this is Dark Dark Ages and the Medieval Era. Um, yeah, I thought this was going to be more of a um, um, I don't, I, like just like medieval setting with superheroes in it this is more of like a game of thrones kind of thing um yeah it's 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 more medieval as opposed to like dark ages is just kind of like what if there was no power yeah yeah the and this is very much a uh instead of the whole universe getting involved this is a hyper focused story on um bat on um batman and superman so far i know that a wonder woman is going to show up um harley quinn shows up uh green yeah. arrow and green lantern show up so it will be the dc universe i believe but we we, we it's hyper focused on batman and superman i i just say i i am enjoying um i i, I did enjoy it um it was i it was a, a stellar read I, I was just not expecting this um i loved it i adored it yeah and it, like i said this is game of thrones but with the dc universe so if you guys like Game of Thrones and you like comic books, definitely, definitely check this out. Uh, I love, I love Batman's role. I love Superman's role, um, and the things relating to Superman. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't read it. Um, 
I love the other characters they choose to use. Like, uh, for instance, John Constantine has, plays a, just a great role in so this. That was so great. There were like a, just a small snippets of these other characters throughout. Like, like Black Lightning is um, basically a, a, another king of, of another realm, and he, you know, they all fear the lightning because it's it's Black Lightning is uh, using his powers. Basically, a lot of super superheroes have used their powers to put themselves in positions of power. Yeah, um, and um, the Robins are used great. They're used yeah, fantastically. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was really, really, really cool. Um, um, and it's and, and I'm not going to say what it is because it's the best reveal of the entire book, but these characters are still your favorite characters, but they're wildly different. Like, the, the core elements are still there, but everything else is, is really different. Yeah, you see Batman, who's super... Um, beholden to um authority which is like his yeah his, and not and his tra- like tradition he's very he's like these are my people and i will honor their traditions and and clark's like Dude, your traditions are stupid and he's like how dare you he's like how dare you but yeah but, I, I give this like a like, like a, a nine out of ten because it was stellar stellar uh very stellar the um, art is phenomenal man i just had that. And um, Yasmin P- Putri does a great job with the art. Yeah. Um, what was your problem? I don't. I had I, I had expectations for it that um, for some reason I I expected this to go a different way than what it did. I, I didn't expect it the feudalism aspect to be as big of a role. Um, I don't know why. I uh, this is not. I simultaneously did and did not expect this. Um, but. The reason I'm going to give it a nine and a half out of 10 is I think the contents of the issue were phenomenal, but now that I know the series is going in this direction, I'm excited for Taylor to introduce more and more of the DC universe um, in this world that he's building, which is super interesting, like this feudal medieval times and all the DC characters, um, but with changes. I'm really, I'm, I'm interested to see like Green Lantern, for instance, how that works. Um, so yeah. I'm like, I'm really excited uh, for the future because it's it's 12 issues so we're hopefully we're going to get quite a bit of world building oh yeah absolutely um the the world building it, it's been pretty good in this mm. um kind of slow my leg is itchy <laughs> but um it it's been slow but it's 12 issues and we're gonna get into black lightning's kingdom there's probably gonna be a war with them there's gonna be civil wars and in, internal strife there's gonna be conflicts um they mentioned like other robins are going to pop up it's mentioned that there's a robin yeah but it's court which i who i presume is um tim drake or damien damien wayne Wayne, because they're the only two members of the the only well we see jason and dick so uh and stephanie and um oh stiff chic and duke thomas um yeah so we will see barbara gordon we didn't see um we didn't see uh, Tim Drake, and we did not see Damian Wayne, so that'll be really interesting. He's setting up. Tom Taylor is like just such a good writer, so I'm super excited, and he's great at world building, um, especially yeah. with Dark Ages and Injustice. Uh, Injustice, like yeah, deceased. Like we're gonna see such a good world building, and I'm so excited for this series. But yeah, um, winners from each company. Uh, my indie winner has to be has to be uh, Newburn. Uh, by Chip Zdarsky, that this was just phenomenal. Pick this up, if you guys, if I, I, you know, if you guys aren't reading the other books I recommend, and you want something new, pick this up. This is this has been great. Um, from um, Marvel, my personal winner, I did have to say was the Amazing Spider-Man. Um, blows my mind that I'm saying it. Maybe it's just because I I was un not used to amazing spider-man content that i enjoyed for the last year um but daredevil is still of course phenomenal phenomenal dc we'll each hold up our own three joe i had to go with these two yeah. this is better if i were to pick one it'd be reptilian if i had to pick two i think it would be these two um big week for big two weeks for dc a lot of good stuff yeah, the, uh, like, it, jump on Arkham City. It is such a weird take on Gotham City. It's such a cool take on Gotham City. Um, it's semi-canonical and not really, and Swamp Thing's wrapping up. So if you guys have missed the boat, pick up the trades. Both trades are out. I'm waiting for the deluxe edition. Um, 
Yeah, but also, it, I'm gonna read Reptilian. I does. Is it over? Was it just four issues? Uh, I believe it's no. I, I think it's um book five of seven, maybe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'll, I'll read it for a thousand issues if he really wants. But um, yeah, this series is wrapping up. I know that for a fact. I'm not sure how many more, but it's wrapping up. Um, maybe six. Um, so yeah, hop on this. And then I'm super excited for this series. So yeah, that will do it for Wednesday Warriors. Let us know uh, what you think of the virtual kind of thing. It's uh, it's interesting, but we're gonna we're gonna work it out. I, I mean, I I I think you went pretty well. I agree. I think we could still kind of uh, Zoom's like a good enough platform that we can like, like we don't like talk at the same time. We're like, oh, oh, you know, like look, oh, oh, you know that. Kind of, oh, whoa, oh, no, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, but so, yeah, I like it. Um, and obviously, this isn't this isn't like a we're gonna shoot for virtual. This is a this is a um, substitute to give exactly. you guys content regularly because uh, as you guys have acknowledged in, in the in the comment section of our last video yeah our upload schedule sucks we're, we're working on it we're working um, on it we're trying to this is well simultaneously busy and in a new environment so it's not like we're in a new environment so we can spend like a bunch of time figuring out what to do it's like we're, we're thrown into the wolves and simultaneously have to figure out what to do um and get out of there and deal yeah. with the wolves themselves so. um that's that's basically yeah that's it but um Wednesday winners, we gotta do like we gotta do January, we gotta do October and September. We're missing out on that series. Maybe we'll maybe what we can do is at the end of the year, just just do our yearly. We'll yeah. talk and, uh, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. But um guys, we love you. Um don't don't think just because we're not uploading as much, you're out of our hearts and our minds. You're always there. Um I don't know about Chad. He, I think he forgot about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, um, yeah, I, without the YouTube channel, I've actually had time to read comic books. So it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I think about you every night before I go to bed, our lovely viewers. Yeah, um, we got In more stuff coming out. Um, Superman for all seasons. We have, uh, I'm going to drop my uh, Amazing Spider-Man issue <laughs> 1 through 10 teaser again um, by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. <laughs> As soon as I get around to finishing it, you guys will hear about it. So, and some other stuff. Uh, we're just kind of figuring it out. Take what you can get. Don't get too greedy. All right. Yeah. But we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Keep reading. Keep reading. I've been Ryan. I've been Chad, and we've been Ryan and Chad. Peace out. Peace.